Welcome to Pragmatic Use of Pragmas in AL. Hey, I'm Eric. And um, if you have developed in, in other languages or you come from you know, C or C++ background, language like that, you're very familiar with the concept of a preprocessor, something that you know works on the source code before the source code is fit into the compiler. In, in AL, we have the same thing. Uh, so we have a way to tell the compiler certain things. We have the way to instruct the compiler on what to do, what not to do, before it actually starts compiling. It's like a, a command layer sitting on top of the compilation process. Um, and, and one of those things is the ability to, uh, to instruct the compiler to allow certain things that normally perhaps would not be allowed. Um, let me let me show you an example. It's probably way easier to uh, to illustrate than me just sitting here talking. So here is the usual. There's the first app, and um, let's create a function, a procedure, a method. We'll create a procedure, and and let's call it. Uh, how about get rid of spaces? This one will take a text, and it will output a text. Uh, nice functional programming perspective. There's no nothing else happening so we'll exit input input dot replace uh, spaces with underscores how about that that is a nice function and it's very nice because we can use it on any text and no matter the size and so on um, so let's use it so I'll go up here and then I will say rec dot name and I'm on a custom table is equal get rid of spaces rec dot name. There you go. And now I get a warning and I get a warning because I have on this project turned on code analysis and I have told that there's a bunch of code, uh, code analyzers that, that I want to have on this project. Um, but now it tells me that my there's something wrong here. Possible overflow assigning text to text 100. Sure, that if get rid of spaces returns something that's larger than name, that could be a runtime error. But we know, because we know better than the compiler, that in this case, we're putting name into the function and this function will never even even in the world of Unicode and all sorts of crazy stuff, this one will never return a string that is larger, uh, never return a text that is larger than the one you got. So no matter what, if you give this 100, it will output 100. So now we're looking at this and this, you know, this is, this is annoying, right? There, there's, there's an, a warning we, we don't like, uh, we don't like warnings and there's actually another one uh, so we can we can look at that uh, error occurring while loading the included i think i need to read actually read on my window let's ignore that one for a second see how this goes now so so give this a second to uh, load the workspace right behind my head there's a Big projects will take a long time to load the uh, the workspace here. There you go. So so we need to tell the compiler that in this case we know better because we know that you know we're we're passing in something to a function that will never make it bigger. So we don't need al aa zero one three nine here let's get rid of this because we don't want any warnings right so what we can do is that we can add a pragma so we can go uh, hashtag or whatever uh, the danish version of the this is a uh, garden fence uh, gate um, because it kind of looked like a gate anyway so what we can do here is we can do a uh, we can say 
pragma. And then we'll tell it warning, disable, ALO, and I forgot, 0139. And it went away. So that's pretty cool. And and, and I, so I could, I could take this pragma and then I could put it up here. Say, so, huh, there we go. In this file, we do not want AA139. But that is perhaps not the right approach. So what we can do is that we can say, let's put it here. Because we know this line is good. We know this line will never break. But, but maybe when we use get rid of spaces in other cases, we need to consider it. So we can tell the, the, this one to pragma warning restore. So if we have the same thing again, then we do get the arrow, or not the arrow, the warning on the second line. If if if, if that was a, a, a different story. So let's say that we want to do something like this, right? Now it's hard to to tell that that those two fields cannot in 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 a in a distant future where Microsoft suddenly decides that address needs to be 200 characters, the name is still 100, and then you know this could break uh, potentially. Bad example, I know. Um, but but we have now told that this line, this specific line, is if we if the compiler gets an AA1. 39 it's okay don't tell us we know this is on purpose we have coded it this way on purpose um, so let's let's try the other thing here up here um, so this one gets an AA 215 so so we can we can we can do the same thing and what is it's saying now that this now so the actual error here is that this is a stupid name. Uh, uh, that is because A215 is a stupid rule, but that's a, that's a different discussion. Uh, but but we can we can go and do pragma again here, and then do 215. Now you see it's it's disabled, and then we can enable it again here. Um, and, and you can see that these lines are kind of completely out of sync with, you just put them in the source code whenever, because they're actually not part of the source code per se. They are instructions to the compiler on how to consume the source code. Uh, there are other other ways with the, again, start with the hashtag where you can define a, 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 a a flag and saying, okay, if this, then include this source code, otherwise do this, include this source code. So you can create like, if on-prem, then do this, if app source, then do that and, 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 and stuff like that. But I think that might be a different video um, because then, you know, there, there's a whole considera consideration on pipelines and how you actually control that. Um, but this is the way that you preserve the warnings that you actually do need but but in the case you say okay uh, I know this line of this line is golden this just works no matter what so shut up about 139 and you, this is how you do shut up 139 so that's a pragma where you can control warnings I think it's pretty cool and and I use it in in my apps to make sure that I actually get warnings. I don't want any warnings in my in, in my apps that goes to app source and so on. But in some cases, I am smarter than the compiler uh, and I know that the warning is not real. And and, and I, I, I don't need to get informed about that every time I, I compile my app. Um, so that's how to be pragmatic about pragmas. So, uh, if you want more ale hacking, this video is for you. Go check it out. It's a good one. See you there. Take care. Bye.